Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Let me move things around a little bit here. All right. Well, yes, it is my pleasure to do this talk today on Father's Day. And no, I've not done it every single year. <laughs> but I do um, often speak on Father's Day, and it's, it is a privilege. And I do want to put a thank you out to Jacob for speaking last week because I was originally scheduled to, and my mother passed just about two weeks ago, and I was not in any shape to do a lesson, and he very immediately and gladly stepped in, so I really want to say thank you to him. So, today, we're really, as we've said many times already, we're honoring our fathers, and you know, it is, could be your, your natural father or many other figures, male, female, and whatever, Amen. that did the kinds of things that fathers are supposed to do. I don't know. So, <clears throat> when we look at honor, it is about respect and esteem that you show to one another. You know, it's the showing of recognition. That's what it means to honor. And so we are recognizing those in our lives that have been fathers to us. So how would we define what a father is? Well, part of it is it's one who guides, protects, originates, institutes, some kind of things about it. And then it's also someone who loves, someone who forgives, has strength, patience, Tenderness. And then you can go to any card store and you'll get oodles of definitions of what a father is, right? <laughs> they abound in all of the things that have been written in and what, what they are. So I want to read a, a, a passage out of the Bible from Psalms chapter 1, verses 2 and 3. Blessed is the man whose delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not with, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Now the power of the month is imagination. Um, I believe they was mentioned on the first Sunday and so forth and gone through, but I want to go into that a little bit. Out of Linda Martellowitz's book, Divine Audacity, she breaks it into three things. So I, part of this is that I think fathers need to imagine what their children are going to do and how do they help guide them along that way. So the first one is conception and then vision and embodiment. So she really feels that this is the foundation of all because it is, and I quote from her, essential for the cultivation of all of our magnificent spiritual capability or capacities. So conception. First, we must have some kind of an idea which has to begin to evolve. It is as we conceive of the things that life begins. The first words in the Bible, in the beginning. That was that concept. It formed and our world became. That is, in the beginning, there's a starting point for every idea. So we conceive things can happen. The next point is vision. So once this idea is born, we then begin to picture what it's going to look like. We begin this visioning, and it gives it shape and form. And in time, you refine that vision. You see what, is it fitting? Is it taking time in and forth there? You play with it, you give it some life. And this is sometimes called the what if stage. What if this is gonna come out like this? Or what if it happened? And at least, if it's kind of meeting something on the bad side for you, it can change it. You know that, so, and then the last part of it is embodiment. So 
finally the idea has its life, its form, and it becomes manifest. So it is with this imagination that things start. So we use our faith and our trust that the idea comes to life, and here it is. So, imagine. What is it? What, what did my father imagine for me? I lost him when I was 11, so I really don't know all of what he would have thought about it and where he wanted to go or he wanted me to do. Um, I do think, though, that he had some idea that I would be going into medicine. Since at Christmas, when I was three, I asked for a skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> so I think he had some idea of moving along in that, even though there's no physicians in our family. I'm quite certain he never imagined that I would be living here in Syracuse. Because so many families think they have all of their children surrounding them, they're all together. And for someone to venture away, that's not usually what we imagine, is it? Right. So. You know, and I do think that um, he had a, a really good financial sense, and so he tried to share that down. Um, and so part of his teaching, as fathers should, was let, teaching me how to write a check when I was like eight years old. Mm -hmm. Because he knew he wasn't going to be around forever. So I, I'd write it, and then I couldn't sign it, but he did. <laughs> so, you know, it is... Just some of these gifts that in time we really understand what our fathers have given us. And it's thinking of these gifts then that you then honor your father when you realize, wow, I was given this gift because of. Mm -hmm. And we can say thank you Amen. for that uh, gift being given. Now, <clears throat> as a father myself, what did I imagine for my child? You know, um, when she was an early teen, I figured she was going to be moving to Arizona and live with her cousins. Well, that didn't happen. You know, but behind, you know, there is this idea of her being a successful adult and having a wonderful partner. And so, with a deeper vision, she now has a southern accent <laughs> and is married to a man who has become a son to me. You know, so, did I imagine the things in that way? Did I imagine five years ago, when she was 28, that she would be a manager for a medical practice? No. But the gifts in the ways that I've been able to give to her helped her being able to do something like that. So, really think about your fathers. And it isn't just that biological father. And how today we really just say, Thank you. Thank you for being here. Yeah. When I was uh, going to some of the Wyoming rallies as a kind of camp, the physician and so forth there, um, there was one I went to, and actually I think it was my daughter's last one. Um, she was graduating that year. And I ended up writing a very short poem um, to my father. And I want to finish with that. And uh, then we'll go into a meditation. Father, here's to you, one of strength, one who touched so many, one who holds my heart. Here's to you, one who blessed, one who laughed, one who spoke truth. Here's to you, my Father. So as we now get ready to be comfortable and go into a time of meditation, just take a breath in and let your heart space be opened. For it is here in this space that we bring all of our father figures. We surround them with love, knowing that they have blessed each of us in so many ways. We feel their presence. 
presence. And it brings joy. Joy in this fulfillment of life. And as we hold these fathers, we are able to say thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Dad. It is a blessing. So as we go now into a time of silence, just hold them all. so it is.